All right, guys, in the last video, we saw how to create browser windows from the main process as well as the renderer process. In this video, let's take a closer look at the browser window itself. Now, again, I have the Hello World app copied into, into a new folder and I have named it as browser window. So it has index.html, main.js and package.json. I've just changed a couple of things. In package.json, I've changed the name to browser window and in index.html, I have changed the title as well as the h1 tag. Now within the create window function, I'm going to remove the code so that we can start with the very basic scenario. Now the first scenario is a default browser window. So we create a variable window and then create a new browser window for that particular window. So if I run this application now, we should get a browser window. And by default, Electron specifies a width of 800 pixels and a height of 600 pixels. So the second scenario is where you can specify your own width and height for the window. So let's create a new variable. I'm going to call this dimension window and let's create a new browser window for that particular variable. So dimension window is going to be equal to a new browser window. And within the parentheses, we can specify the different options for the browser window. Now I'm going to specify a width of 400 and a height of 400 as well. So let's save this and start our application. So now if you have a look, we have the outer window, the default window that is 800 by 600. And we also have our dimension window, which is 400 by 400. Now, of course, you can increase the height and width, even though you have specified that explicitly. So that is fine. But if you want to restrict your height and width to a certain number of pixels, you can add in the max height and the max width property. So over here, I'm going to add max width. Let's give this 600 and also max height 600. So now let's run our application. So we have our dimension window, which is 400 by 400, and I can extend it to 600 by 600. So the width is going to be 600, that's about it. And then the height is going to be the full 600, which matches the before default window. Now one point you have to make note of here is how you close your window. So if you choose file and then exit, it exits the application itself. So all the windows close when you exit. If you want to close a particular window, then click on the window menu and then click on close and only that particular window will be closed. All right, specifying the dimensions is the second scenario. The next scenario is where we can specify a background color for our browser window. So I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call this color window. And then this color window is going to be a new browser window. But this time within the options, we can specify a background color. Now you can set basically any hex code. I'm going to set 228B22. All right, let's save this and run our application. Now, when I run npm start, we should get a new browser window with the background color. So we have a dark green, let's say for this particular window, this is the color window. This is the dimension window and this is the default window. So let's exit this application. Finally, the fourth scenario is we can also create frameless browser windows. So these windows don't have a toolbar or a border. So create another variable. I'm going to call this frameless window. And then I'm going to create a new browser window out of this frameless window. So frameless window is equal to new browser window. And let's specify the option background color. I'm going to give this 800000. And to make this a frameless browser window, we need to specify the option frame and set it to false. So now when I run the application, 
All right, so this browser window does not have a frame, so no toolbar and also no border, as opposed to this one, where you can see that this has a border and the toolbar. So these are some of the options concerning the appearance of the browser window. When it comes to the behavior, we have a few options as well. So let's exit this and I'm going to comment out the code so far. All right, in Electron, it is possible to create parent and child windows by specifying the parent option. So let's take a look at an example. I'm going to create two new variables, let parent window and child window. Now the parent window, let's create a new browser window. And then the child window is going to be a new browser window as well, but this time, for the browser window or the child window, we are going to specify an option that says parent is going to be parent window. So basically this particular window has a parent and what is the parent? It is the parent window. Let's save this and start our application. So npm start and if you have a look, we should have two browser windows, but it is difficult to identify right away which is the parent and which is the child window. Both the windows have the title as browser window and this is from package.json. So if I go to package.json, you can see that name is browser window and that is what gets set over here. So let's exit this application, go back to our main.js and what we can do here is specify a title property to our browser window. So title is going to be parent and similarly over here, the title is going to be child. Now let's start our application. Now if you notice the title, we have a child and also the parent. Now the rule in Electron is that the child window will always be on top of the parent window. So even if I try to click on the parent window and try to bring it to the front, it doesn't happen. The child window is always on top. I can, however, put them side by side and continue to work with my parent window. But sometimes we would like the user to first complete some task on the child window, like agree to some terms and conditions before clicking on the next button in the parent window. So in that scenario, we specify another property, namely modal. A modal window is nothing but a child window that disables the parent window. So you have to specify both the parent option and the modal option for a modal window. So we have the parent, let's also specify the modal. And I'm gonna set this to true. Let's restart our application and test this out. So now we have our child window and we also have our parent window in the background. And if you notice, if I try to click on the parent window, it doesn't allow me. It says I have to use the child window before I can move on to the parent window. So if I do a window close and then I can move on to the parent window. All right, so that is about parent and child windows in Electron. The last thing I want to demo is that a browser window can open either a remote address or a local HTML file. Now we have seen how to load a local HTML file in the previous videos. So in this video, let me show you how we can load a remote address in our browser window. So we can type childwindow.loadurlgithub.com. All right, now when we run this app, we see that the window is created first. So we have the child window, and then there is a slight delay for the GitHub page to render in this window. Now let me run this again in case you missed it. I'm going to close this, run npm start again. The window is loaded, we have a slight delay and then GitHub page again. Alright, to avoid that flicker, we're going to specify a show option and set it to false. So over here, show and set it to false. So for the child window, we are not going to show it by default. Instead, we are going to listen to this ready to show event and then show the child window. So this basically gets fired when the child window has completed rendering the URL. So now if I run npm start, 
We have the parent window and you see that the child window isn't immediately rendered. It only gets rendered when the GitHub page is rendered within the child window. I'm going to show this again in PM start. We just have the parent window at beginning and then the child window without the flicker. So you can see that GitHub is right away present in the child window. Well, those are some of the options that I wanted to teach you guys, but there are about a hundred different things you can set for a browser window. So I would recommend just going through the Electron documentation to get a feel of what the browser window is capable of doing. The document also specifies the different events on the browser window, so it definitely is helpful. All right, so that is about the browser window. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.